Hey folks, Bob Desmond here over at The Contrarian Trader. And today, what we're going to be looking at on best stock charts for the coming week are obviously some charts of some really high quality trades. Most of them are going to be long trades. One of them is going to be a short trade. But before we go into those symbols, what I want to talk about is our week last week. How did we do? We did very well. Our position, our portfolio, I should say, they were up dramatically. We had a very strong week. We knew that bond yields were going to break out or have a continuation breakout. Sure enough, what were we long of and what did we buy more of? The banks. Why? They do well when the market rallies along with bond yields. Now, I was asked about the performance page. There was no activity last week. The reason is we didn't close out anything. We were positioned in advance of a rally. So we allowed those positions to gain some momentum, to gain steam. So net-net on the week, it was a very profitable week. However, those are paper gains, not realized gains. Big difference. So I don't want to come off that we booked realized gains. However, our portfolio did very, very well. So moving into this new week, what we need to be mindful of, and this is important. I know some people get triggered when you talk about politics, folks. If you're, if you're looking to make this your career, trading your career, or even to have it as a side hustle, a business, which you can, and it is a business, if you get triggered because we're talking about what's going on in Washington, D.C., maybe this business isn't for you, honestly. We need to talk about where the power lies. When I first started The Contrarian Trader back in 2005, the power was in the conference rooms of the Wall Street brokerages. Now... The power is in Washington, D.C. after the financial crisis and after the Federal Reserve primed that pump and has never stopped since. So we're going to talk about politics here a little bit, not a support or repudiation of one candidate over another. The fact of the matter is this is going to be the final full trading week of trade prior to the election. Expect volatility. It's going to be nuts, the headlines coming down. So expect volatility. I think that since we didn't roll over on Friday, Thursday, Friday, with no deal, I don't think there's going to be a deal. I just checked. This is Sunday morning. I'm recording this. I just checked, and there's still no hint of a deal, meaning any stimulus out of Washington. So I think what they're going to do is they're going to punt until after the election. The fact that we did not sell off on Friday, Thursday, Friday, implies to me that the street is saying, okay, we're going to get uh, stimulus in about 10 days. So they'll live with it. So we're going to stick with a long side bias. However, this market is on very, very thin ice. So if you think that this market is going to go ripping to new all-time highs and stay there, absent some economic growth, organic economic growth, you're sorely mistaken. We're going to be taking the ride up with the markets so long as the momentum holds up. The minute I see weakness in this market, I am exiting, especially in advance of Election Day. We are going to be looking to lighten up on shorts in advance of Election Day. So, oh, before I get into the charts that we're watching for the new trading week, tonight is Sunday evening, obviously. <laughs> uh, join us for Sunday night stock market futures live 6 p.m eastern standard time what we'll do is we'll review the opening price action of the futures market then i'm going to talk about some headlines economic data from last week how it influenced our positioning for this week we'll also talk about economic data earnings coming out this coming week and then of course we'll take members stock chart requests that's where we review the symbols that our members submit for me to review live on video and if we have time, I'll take a few symbols from the audience. I usually take them from familiar names that I see frequently that are really dedicated fans. So understand going in that we have a hierarchy that we go with, members, dedicated fans, and so on. So let's get to our, oops, <laughs> let's get to our symbols for the new trading week. The first symbol that we're going to be talking about is Snap, Snapchat, symbol SNAP. It's an extreme overbought stock relative to, this is a daily chart. I'm just going to discuss the reason why I like it 
we do a deeper dive with members on the week ahead commentary posted in the members area. So if you're not a member, you want to see the deep dive on market pulse check meaning. How do we close out the week last week? Uh, how did the closing price action of the stock market and the bond market influence how we positioned moving into this new trading week? Also, we reviewed our portfolio. Do we want to add? Do we want to sell? And we also do a deeper dive on the symbols I'm about to go over, meaning not just daily charts or weekly charts. Uh, we do intraday charts when necessary, monthly charts when necessary. We have a longer commentary with regard to entry points, exit points, stop loss points on these names. So if you're not currently a member, 14-day free trial offer. And I'm using TrendSpider, silver gold level members, get that free. Uh, TrendSpider, if you just want it alone, you want a 35% discount. Use the link below in the video description area, 35% discount code. Lowest price on the internet because I do so much business with them. Let's get to the charts. All right, snap, daily chart, RSI. Closed out the day on Friday at 92 spot 15, extreme nosebleed levels. Add to that the fact that we rallied up and through the third standard deviation Bollinger Band on Friday. This rally in SNAP is unsustainable. This will not last much longer before we get a correction. Am I predicting a crash? No, I'm not predicting a crash. What we want to do here is enter to the short side, whether it be shorting the common or buying some put options and taking 5 10% profits to the downside as it corrects, allowing this froth to come off the stock then it'll probably consolidate, and then it'll probably move up higher. Now, the weekly chart is very overbought as well, closing out the week with RSI at 87, above that actually, and above its third standard deviation Bollinger Band. So daily time frame, weekly time frame, extreme overbought levels, unsustainable. We are probably going to pull back really, really soon. But I'll tell you, as we look into... Monday morning, and how we closed on a 30-minute time frame on Friday, it appears as though, given the closing price action, it appears as though we are going to move up higher if I had a better nickel on Monday morning. It's on that rally that I'll probably be looking to lean into the short side on Snapchat. So moving on to our next symbol, Alaska Air. We want to go with a weekly time frame here because what the chart is telling you in fact let's see if the automated trend lines you know i'm going to draw my trend lines first and then i'm going to see if the automated trend lines validate what i'm saying or pick up something that i missed and that's really the value of trend spider for those who are experienced technicians it's not just for beginners it's for experienced people too i, I call it my spell check for technical analysis so i'm going to put up my manual trend lines and you can see that last week we closed right at a resistance level on a weekly time frame. All right, so now what I'm going to do for giggles is overlay the weekly trend lines to see whether or not I'm accurate with my call as to whether or not resistance is on or about where I just stated. And here we go. Click of a button. All right, so actually... Uh, it's somewhat validating what, I, what I'm saying here. I think I have a higher threshold for expectations of a stock when it's attempting to break out. The, we're in the ballpark, meaning the automated trend lines are saying, you know what, Bob, we broke out last week on Alaska Air Group. Uh, my trend lines are saying, no, we haven't had a clean breakout yet. I'm going to go with mine because it's a higher threshold of expectation for the stock. Remember, we're still in a downtrend on Alaska Air. So what we want to do is we want to pay it respect. The path of least resistance remains down. So we want to have that higher expectation of a breakout on the share price. So that way we don't get whipsawed out of the trade too soon. We want to enter the trade once we validate the breakout on my manually driven line. And what we're seeing here is a beautiful, beautiful RSI. And we have an indicator leading price performance on RSI. Beautiful. Now with members, I go over the daily chart to discuss 
an entry point, exit point, stop loss point. It'll be listed on the watch list in the members area as well. So go check that out, members. The next chart up is Facebook. Now, I've been a hater on Facebook for a while because I just don't like the the censorship and the playing God stuff. I think ultimately it's going to come back to haunt these companies. Twitter as well. Google, it's already happening with. Uh, DOJ is is on them with a lawsuit, antitrust lawsuit. And I think they're just setting up setting themselves up for bad things to happen uh, with regard to liability protections. But be that as it may, my concerns being pushed aside, the share price is looking very good here on Facebook. Last week, we broke out above resistance. We're still technically in a channel. I won't say in a downtrend per se. Here would be your lower band of that downtrend. Here's your upper band of the downtrend, but we haven't broken out above that upper band of the downtrend channel. I'm using that term loosely, downtrend channel. And why am I using it loosely? Because we have not broken down. Despite the fact we have lower highs, we did not confirm the breakdown to new lower lows. So Facebook looking good as we move into the new trading week. We may get a pullback and a retest of support at 278, 279 per share. That would be an interesting entry point. RSI would then pull back, retest support. That would be a good event to occur. So we'll sit, watch, and wait. And again, I go over this with members on the week ahead commentary posted in the members area. The next chart up is EMR, Emerson Electric. I spoke about this one last week as a watch stock. Why didn't we enter the trade? It simply didn't do what we wanted it to do. It, it did not break out on the week. And that's what we were looking for. Now, we did attempt to break out last week. However, that breakout was rejected. But I do believe that we will be moving up higher this new trading week. And if we fall back, I like entry points down below as an entry point. In fact, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create an alert at the support level. So here's my alert. I want to get notified when we touch or bounce on a 30-minute candle. My sensitivity is low. Meaning I want to get pretty close to that support level before that alert fires off. Not be in the in the approximate area. So I'm, I could widen it out if I wanted to. But I don't want to do that. I want to keep it nice and narrow. True. To support. Notes to self. And of course I want to keep this active for a certain time frame. We'll keep it active for five days. And set it and forget it. We'll also want to get notified of when we break out all right so here's our alert one hour time frame i want to i want to get notified i don't care about five minutes ten minutes if it if it spends that much time above that mark i want to know on a closing time frame of a one hour candlestick if we break out above resistance notes to self which is incorrectly spelled left off the e there we go uh, breakout weekly time frame i want to either open or add if i Add, that means I would have opened a position down here and I want to add on a breakout. That alert is now set. Set and forget it. I'm not going to look at this for another week or so when I do a new round of scans for the week ahead commentary. The next symbol up is XAR. XAR is an ETF putting you long of defense stocks. Now, this was also on best stock charts last week. However, it just consolidated last week. So, therefore, what we did was we watched for a continuation breakout. And if you just saw what I did, I clicked this button for the automated trend lines. And you can see that back here on or during the week of October the 5th, we broke out on XAR. We've pulled back and done a retest once, twice. I think that we're going to get a follow through to the upside fairly soon. Okay, so here's our alert. I want to know when we break out and through this resistance level, I want sensitivity really low. I don't care if we're in the neighborhood. I want to know when we're above that mark. And note to self, XAR breakout weekly time frame, more significant than the daily time frame. That's why I put that note in there because sometimes things get very, very rapid fire intraday. And what we want to do is 
be able to refer to our notes so we can go about our business without having to reanalyze charts. So our alert is set. Moving on to DuPont. That's a weekly time frame that we're looking at now. And again, members, I do a deeper dive in the members area. It's posted there. Go check it out. Now, DuPont, I went over last week as well. Why didn't we trade it? Because it didn't meet our level of expectation with regard to an entry point. I think that it will. That's why I'm talking about it right now. All I need to do here is because I already used them, is the automated trend lines. And actually, I want to modify this a little bit. I think that what we could do here is modify and set up a tripwire. And what I mean by a tripwire is I want to get notified that a weekly resistance level, although it's not the primary breakout point here in green, I want to know that a tripwire, an intra-channel resistance level has been pierced. And once I see that, I go to the daily chart, and I see how we closed out the day. Did it hold? How was volume? How was price? Did we close at the highs of the day? Did we fade on the day? And then I'll take my cues as to whether or not I want to scratch the itch, maybe uh, put on a small opening position to test the market, and then on a breakout above the primary resistance level, then add more, more aggressively to that trade. So that's what we're doing here. We're not going to jump in with both feet because one of our alerts fired off. That's stinking thinking. We don't do that here. We want to be very deliberate. Okay, so here's our alert. I want to know when we break out sensitivity light, one hour candlestick, I want to get notified. That'll fire off on my cell phone, PC, whatever. And here's my note to self. Long entry, teeny weeny. That's a new technical term I just came up with. Is it spelled right? I don't know. I don't think that this is appropriate spelling for it. I think I just made it up. Therefore, Investimonials and Miriam Webster's, enter it just like I spelt it here, please, for historical reference. And we're going to keep this active for five weeks. We really should, all, all kidding aside, if we enter on a breakout above this tripwire, very, very small, scratch the itch, test the market, and that alert is set. And then I really want to know if there's a breakout above the primary upper band of resistance because that's that's the pimp mac daddy we close above that weekly resistance level it's game on to the long side especially with the industrial names i don't mean the dow 30 i'm talking about your cyclical names steel copper energy beginning to rally if they're going to rally so are chemicals okay so here's the alert one hour candlestick, I want to get notified of a breakout. Sensitivity very low. I don't care if we're in the neighborhood. There we go. That's even better. I only care if we close above that resistance level. Not if we come a dime short of it. I only care about the close above that resistance level. Not if it's above it at 10 a.m. I'm beating the drum here. I know I'm boring the heck out of you, but it's important. Not at 12 a.m. or p.m. if it's trading above that resistance level. I care at 3.55 in the afternoon. Are we trading above resistance? If yes, then it's game on. If no, we fade. Well, we, we live to play another day and we wait. Note to self, DuPont, primary weekly breakout point. We're either going to add or open to a position. In this case, I'm going to keep this live for 10 business days. And there we go. Set it and forget it. And with that, folks, everybody have a great remainder of your weekend. Don't forget, join us tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I go live on YouTube, use the link below, set the reminder button. Sometimes that doesn't work, or it fires off after I go live. If you want to get notified prior to me going live, use the link below. Enter your email address, we hate spam too. If you're already on our email list, don't re-enter it, and you get notified 15 minutes prior to us going live. Hopefully, I'll see you there, and have a profitable trading week. Be well.